Hello everybody, uh, thanks a lot to the organizer for the invitation. Uh, yes, there is a little mistake in my slide since I moved from the south of Paris to the north of Paris <laughs> yesterday. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, parking on the infinite binary tree. So this tree is my non-Euclidean space with hyperbolic flavor. So I think this is uh, justifying why I'm here. So let me present the, the model. Oh, okay. So there, it's supposed to be uh, vertices between the edges, <laughs> which we cannot see, but uh, okay. So uh, the, the tree will be random after, and this will be the infinite binary tree, but uh, let us uh, start with the fixed tree with vertices between the edges. And uh, root, this is a rooted tree. The root is here at the bottom. And all edges are oriented toward the root. So this is my parking lot. Each vertex represents uh, one parking spot, can uh, accommodate at most one car. And then on, on this tree, we add a car decoration. So near the ver on every vertex, there are, uh, on some vertex, there are car cars arriving, and uh, we will park them using uh, uh, the following rule. Uh, the, this, uh, the car have a preferred parking spot, their arrival vertex, so they park as soon as possible. If their arriving vertex is free, they park just here, and if it's not free, they follow the edges and take the first uh, spot available. And we park the cars layer by layer, starting from the bottom. So we start with these three cars. The first one parked there. The second follow, follow the edge and park at the root. And the third one tries to park here. It's, it's uh, already taken, it follows the edges, it arrives at the root, and there are no more uh, free spots, so it exits the tree without parking. And we continue with uh, the two cars here. So the first one park on, uh, on this vertex. The second one follows the edge and park there. Then this car park on its arriving vertex. Same for the, this car at the top. And here the first car park at the arri ar arriving vertex and the se second one follows the edges, cannot find a free spot and exit the tree. So I hope the rules are clear for everybody. Um, I said that I start from the bottom of the tree and park the, the car uh, layer by layers. This is important for infinite tree, but when the tree is finite, uh, there is an abelian property. You can park the, the car in uh, uh, the order that you want. Uh, you will always have the same uh, final configuration. Um, Yes, so. Yes, yes. The, the occupied spot will be the same and the number of uh, outgoing cars will be the same. And does it mean two don't get the same uh, they, You can have um, ambiguities um, uh, in some configuration if, uh, if you start from infinity. Uh, it's, it can be um, uh, ambiguous. So you just have to choose the uh, rule. Uh, you, mm, okay. Is this, just is this kind of like a sand pile with possible height too? Just the way I think about it? Yes. Okay, so this was the rules for a fixed tree and a fixed uh, car decoration, but uh, in the rest of the talk, uh, the model will, with, will always be a, as follows. First, we fix a rooted tree. So we need a route to have a, a, a direction in which a, the cars park. It can be deterministic or random, infinite or infinite. And uh, on the top of this tree, then conditionally on this tree, we add a car decoration. And the, the um, low of the car arrival will be IID with uh, low mu. And a uh, natural uh, observable that we can uh, look at is the number of uh, outgoing cars. 
uh, you can imagine that uh, if you put uh, very few cars, then almost all cars uh, will manage to park and you, your number of outgoing cars will be really small. But uh, if you put uh, lots of car, cars, then uh, there, is, there will be many cars will, will not manage to park. For example, if you put more than one car per vertex, then you will, be, uh, you will have a, a positive uh, proportion of cars that will not manage to park. And um, uh, um, uh, you, have, you will have a, a transition between these two regimes where you have almost all car, cars that manage to park and a positive proportion of them uh, which does not manage to park and to, to have a, a continuity between these two regimes we will often look at a, a continuous family of, uh, um, of uh, uh, an increasing family of uh, stochastically increasing family of laws mu alpha with mu alpha has mean alpha and uh, we want to uh, find a phase transition between these two regimes uh, where almost all car parks and a uh, positive proportion of them uh, does not park. Uh, so let's, uh, let us look at a simulation, oh, uh, if we can. <laughs> can you see something or, uh, okay. So this is a big tree of size uh, 1000. <laughs> uh, you will see, maybe you will better see when uh, there will uh, be a uh, lots of cars. So, uh, you have a black dots which represent the cars and in green this is the root of the tree and uh, we add cars uniformly at random on the vert vertices of the trees. So when there are a, f a few cars then they all park near their uh, arriving spot. You see here, uh, you can see here uh, with the thickness and the color of the edges this represents the flux of car uh, going through the edges. And when we add more and more cars, you start to have uh, a global conflict and big uh, traffic jam and a, a, a cluster of parked spots that uh, occupy the positive proportion of the tree. Maybe near the, the leaves, here you have free spot, but you have really a, a big component. Okay, uh, how can we uh, formalize this uh, phase transition? So if uh, the tree is infinite, you have, a, for example, uh, the simplest tree, uh, just a, fi a line, or the binary tree uh, that uh, I will talk about after. Uh, if you look at the number of outgoing cars, there is a phase transition between a subcritical <coughs> regime where the number of uh, outgoing cars is almost surely finite and the supercritical regime where the number of outgoing cars is almost surely infinite. There is no uh, in-between regime where the number of outgoing cars can be uh, uh, finite with positive probability and infinite with pro positive probability. Um, okay, and uh, what we want to do is to locate uh, this phase transition. When does it happen? Depending on, uh, for example, the car av arrival laws. And uh, we can also define a phase transition for finite tree, but uh, for large tree. We'll uh, see examples uh, after. So let, let's start with the simplest uh, tree, the line. This is okay. This is the the, um, the model where the, this parking function has been introduced in the literature uh, by Conheim and Weiss in the 60s, and they studied this uh, this parking uh, model for uh, uh, informatic consideration. They were studying the hash tables. Okay. Uh, when so when our tree is just a line, we can encode uh, the um, uh, car configuration by a random walk uh, whose increment are one minus 
the number of cars arriving at a vertex. So here, there are no cars arriving here, so the increment is 1. Here there are two cars, so it's 1 minus 2 minus 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 3 minus 2, etc. And um, uh, we can see that all cars manage to park if this random walk stays uh, non-negative until the end of the line, or it's an infinite line. So uh, just looking at the drift of this random walk, uh, you can see that uh, this has a trivial phase transition in the sense that um, uh, it happens when you uh, have um, uh, one car per vertex uh, in average. So, and uh, what happens for more complicated uh, trees? Um, what happens for random trees, for example? So I stay with tree with have, uh, which have uh, one uh, vertex, one children in average, but uh, this time this is random. So we take a bien aimé Galton Watson tree, uh, which is a tree where uh, every uh, vertex has a uh, reproduces uh, according to a an offspring dis distribution nu. And we suppose that this uh, distribution has, has mean one, and finite variance. And uh, we look at the tree uh, condition to have n vertices in total. And uh, we suppose that uh, we have an uh, independent car uh, conditionally on that tree. We have independent car arrivals. It does not depend on the structure of the tree. And the, the law of the car arrivals, this time it can depends on the vertices, but it can only depend on the vertices through their degree. And uh, what we prove is that we have a phase transition and we have a criterion to uh, determine in which uh, regime we are. So we have a, the location of the phase transition only depends on the first two moments of both law, the offspring distribution and the law of the car ar arrivals. So alpha is the mean of the um, car arrivals and Sigma square is the uh, variance. So in the supercritical regime, the number of outgoing cars is proportional to the size of the tree. So the, f the number of outgoing cars is uh, linear in uh, the size of the tree when, um, uh, so when we are in the supercritical regime. Uh, and in the subcritical regime, so not uh, the uh, the fl flux of outgoing cars is sublinear, but more than that, uh, it uh, the number of outgoing cars has a finite distribution. It uh, converges in low as n goes to infinity. And uh, in this we have a critical regime where it's in between. So if we divide uh, the flux of outgoing gas by n, it converges in probability to zero, but it does not converge in probability without uh, renormalization. So this is for the tree condition to have size n. And uh, if we look at the unconditioned tree, the expectation of the number of outgoing cars in the uh, unconditioned Galton Watson tree, at the same uh, critical point, it, uh, go, uh, in the subcritical regime, it's finite, whereas in the supercritical regime, it's infinite. And uh, if we look also at the clusters of parked cars, in the supercritical regime, they are linear in the size of the, uh, the, the tree where the uh, largest uh, cluster of park cars is at most logarithmic in the uh, subcritical region. So uh, to, to, to sum up, um, in the, so here we have random trees with uh, 
uh, an offspring distribution and then we add another layer of uh, randomness and the phase transition is quite simple. It only depends on the first two moments of the law. So what happens for the binary tree now? So it, this is ju there's the rooted tree where every vertex has two children this time. So maybe you think it should be easier, the tree is fixed, and uh, every vertex is at the same degree. So we, on this tree, we, had, uh, we add uh, car decoration with one low. So what is the location of the transition for this tree? Any guess? Maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe not. Maybe I can help you. So we introduced the generating function of uh, the law of the car arrivals, mu. And I introduced this parameter, tc, where uh, you have this equality between the generating function, its derivative, and its second derivative. Uh, maybe I can say that uh, usually tc is uh, positive because if you want to be uh, subcritical, you must have a positive probability to have zero car at a vertex. So on the left, this is, uh, this is positive rather than the, um, uh, 40 equals zero, and on the right is uh, zero. So when this TC exists, you are in the subcritical regime if you verify this inequality. You can just check uh, if this TC exists, uh, if this quantity is greater than this one. Um, this uh, condition on the existence of TC is not very restrictive uh, for uh, a usual uh, laws like uh, 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 with finite support it exists when uh, the G has uh, an infinite uh, radius on, of convergence, uh, the parameter TC also exists. And uh, we can also circumvent the, this, uh, this hypothesis. We also have a method to, uh, to determine if we are in the subcritical regime or not, uh, when it does not exist. And uh, you can really use these uh, formulas as the recipe to compute the critical point of, uh, of, uh, of the parking process for, uh, uh, for simple law. For example, maybe the sim simplest is when you can have zero or two um, uh, cars, two cars with probability alpha over two or zero car cars over one. Then the critical uh, value is when alpha equals one over 14. And uh, for those you know, uh, there is a, um, a model which is uh, close to this uh, parking uh, process, which is the derrida Reto model. You also take the infinite, uh, you take the a binary tree, but you cut it at level n, and you add a car only on the leaves, and you look at uh, 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 the limit when uh, n goes to infinity, but with car only on the leaves. And uh, for this, there is also a phase transition and it uh, happens at uh, alpha equals one over five. So when we have cars only on the leaves, it happens late, uh, later because we haven't uh, cars everywhere. Uh, okay, for a little bit more complicated law, so you have either k cars with probability alpha over k or zero cars otherwise we can compute also explicitly the critical value alpha c, and also it's asymptotic as uh, k goes to infinity. It's of this form. And for, for, for Poisson car arrivals, the critical value is uh, 3 minus 2 square root of 2. And for uh, geometric car arrival, ar arrivals, it's 1 over 8. Um, so maybe before... Uh, starting uh, the proof of uh, the theorem, um, I want to mention some uh, consequences of, uh, of our proof. Uh, first, if you want to, have to be in the subcritical regime, 
you need that uh, the expectation of 2 to the power uh, number of cars ar arriving at a vertex, so this has the law of the car arrivals, this uh, have, has to be finite, otherwise you have uh, cars contributing uh, uh, at, uh, at the flux at every uh, layer of uh, the tree and, uh, and your uh, flux will be infinite. Um, another um, a consequence is that even at the critical, in the critical regime, the expectation of uh, the, the number of outgoing cars is finite, and this is the uh, difference with the case of uh, Galton-Watson trees. Uh, in, for Galton-Watson trees, the flux was infinite at the critical point. And um, we can also look at the size of the cluster of uh, part cars and the clusters of empty spots. Uh, so, um, in the subcritical regime, the cluster of part cars are always finite, whereas, uh, uh, so, and also in the critical regime, whereas the cluster of empty spots can be finite or infinite. And this is also the case in the critical regime. Also at criticality, you may have uh, infinite clusters of uh, empty spots. And uh, in the supercritical regime, so you have almost surely the number of outgoing cars is infinite, but more than that, all spots are uh, occupied. So there are no free spots. Okay, uh, and we will really use these clusters of uh, parked and uh, empty spot to uh, prove our theorem. And uh, the main idea is to decompose uh, the final configuration into uh, clusters into cluster of part cars, which are finite uh, in the subcritical and critical regime. And uh, to do this, we, we will need to enumerate the, the possible, uh, every possible uh, uh, cluster of part cars. And we will also see uh, how to do it. And um, so we will need two important quantities which is the probability that uh, the root is a free spot and the probability that uh, the root contains a car but there are no outgoing cars. So maybe uh, since I will use it after I can work it there. So P white is the probability that uh, the root vertex is empty and P black which is uh, white here, it's the probability that there are no outgoing cars, but uh, the root contains a car. Okay, so let us look at the final configuration. And uh, we will uh, decompose the final configuration into clusters. So here uh, the the uh, empty spots are white and the, the, the spots that contain the car are uh, gray and I, uh, the, the edges bet uh, between the parked, uh, the occupied spots are uh, uh, thicker. 
So the component of the root is this one. And um, if we want the probability that there are k, k outgoing cars, we can sum over uh, all possible components. So we, s we sum over all possible sizes of the component of the root, all possible components with n vertices and k outgoing cars. And uh, every component com comes with uh, its weight. What is its weight? It's just <coughs> uh, for my tree here. The weight is just proportional to the car arrivals on uh, this uh, vertex. So the, the root is free. So I have a weight uh, mu zero. The left child of the root is occupied, so I have a weight mu one, then it's free mu zero, it's free mu zero, uh, at the top mu three, and then I, uh, on the right mu zero, mu zero, mu two for the left branch of the right child, and then for the right branch of the right child, mu two, mu zero, mu two, mu one. So for each, uh, 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 we will call it fully parked tree with k outgoing cars. You have a weight just proportional to the uh, car arrivals at uh, each vertex. And then, so this is the component of the root. So every uh, spot here has, has to be empty. Otherwise, the component is bigger. Here, 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 and there. And they are, for a component of size n, n there are exactly n plus 1 vertices that uh, have to be empty. So that's why it's p0 to the uh, n plus 1. And uh, so. We will uh, specifically use it for k equals zero, the, uh, but uh, when the, the root is occupied, so when p black is the sum over all possible size of the component, all component with okay zero outgoing car, but uh, one car parked at the root, the weight of uh, the component, and P0 to the n plus 1, P white. And for P white, so if a, a vertex is empty, it means that so there are no cars arriving at the vertex, and it has two children. And the children have to be either a free spot or the bottom of a component, but with no outgoing cars. So, and this is the probability that it contains a car, but no outgoing cars. So for P white, we have this equation. This is the probability that there are no cars arriving at it. And for its two children, they are either empty spot or occupied spot, but with no outgoing cars. And so we have two equations with uh, two unknown. So I can plug it, this uh, equation, re I can replace a P, y, a P black with this equation. And if we introduce uh, so the generating function of fully packed trees with uh, uh, so where each vertex is uh, has weight uh, x and uh, every outgoing cars has weight y. 
I can rewrite this equation, this, this two equation, as mu zero times p zero plus. If I replace here, this is p zero f of p zero and y equals zero squared. And this is what I. Uh, this is all, uh, almost what I have uh, written there. Uh, we proved that the, the parking process is subcritical if, uh, so when it's subcritical, there must be a positive probability that uh, you have a, an empty spot. So if you have a positive solution to this equation, then you are uh, subcritical, if and only. And uh, you can notice that uh, on the right, uh, this is uh, an increasing function in x. So you only need to, uh, to see that if at the radius of convergence of uh, this function, uh, this is greater than <coughs> the right hand side is greater than 1 at the radius of convergence of x. Okay, but we are not done. Uh, we, uh, what, uh, we don't know what uh, this function, what is the value of this function uh, f at its radius of convergence. So we have to enumerate the fully packed trees of size n, at least with, with zero outgoing flux. Mm. But it helps to introduce this uh, uh, bivariate uh, generating function also with the uh, the, the cars the fully factory with outgoing flux, and um, the main idea is to also decompose them at the root, as we did for uh, for a p white, and to uh, uh, so. A fully parked tree with p outgoing cars and uh, n vertices. So either uh, n equals 1, and then there are p plus 1 cars arriving on this vertex, or the root has children, 1 or 2. So if it has two children, then if there are p, p outgoing cars and p1 cars coming from the left, P2 cars coming from the right, L cars arriving at this vertex. So you have P1 cars plus P2 cars plus L cars arriving at the root. One parks, so you must have P equals P plus 1 plus, plus P plus 2 plus L minus 1. And uh, if you have only one uh, child, it can be the left child or the right ch child, so that's why I put a, a times two here. And uh, you also have a, a relation between the cars arriving from uh, this fully parked tree, uh, the car arriving at this vertex, and the p. And so we can uh, translate this decomposition into uh, a relation uh, on f. So on the left, you, you sum over all possibilities of uh, uh, fully parked trees. You just have f of x and y. So you have a weight uh, y per uh, outgoing car. So this is the generating function of the car arrivals, x for the vertices, and you divide by y because you must have uh, one more car. And you continue, if you have a one uh, child, you write one time the function f, uh, x represents the, the root vertex, and you divide by y because of the minus one uh, on both sides. And you have the factor two here for the left and right. But you have to be careful on the, uh, uh, on the fact that uh, the, this spot must be occupied, so you must have at least uh, one car arriving here, for example, in this uh, 
In this case, so you must subtract the, the when uh, uh, when the 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 term when uh, uh, the zero term here, the zero term here, and the zero term here. And so you get an equation on f, and this equation uh, really character characterizes our function f. But uh, it seemed that, uh, so I remember that uh, we wanted only to know f when y equals zero. And here, it seems to be that uh, we need the function f when y equals zero to solve it uh, for all y. So we have a polynomial equation which involves f, f zero when uh, y equals zero, x and y. And uh, the key idea to solve this equation is to, so we have only, uh, here we, ha we had only uh, one equation and two unknown, f and f zero. And the key idea is to uh, f uh, look for a y, so y which depends on x, which satisfies this, uh, so the derivative with respect to the first coordinate is zero, because then we have another uh, equation, which uh, just uh, when uh, comes from this one. So we have now three equations. Y depends on x, so it's a, another unknown, but we have three equations and three unknown. So we have a uh, better chance to uh, solve them. <coughs> so these are the three equations. And uh, we can solve them. For example, if I combine the first two one, we have this equation between x and y. And uh, using the last one, we have uh, an explicit formula for f of x, which just, with which just depend on uh, the generating function j and y. So we cannot write, uh, we can, the, the formula y in terms of x is not ex explicit since we need to invert a g and its derivative, but uh, this really characterizes uh, y. And um, if we want the radius of convergence of our uh, uh, of, of uh, our uh, here f0, we uh, want to know uh, 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 when we can write uh, x in terms of y and y in terms of x. And if we plot the, the function uh, x in terms of y, we see that we can invert it as soon as uh, it's uh, uh, bijective, so we can invert it until we reach this point where uh, the derivative of x depending on y uh, uh, cancels. And when it cancels, we know the we can compute the value of uh, y uh, at this point. So this is why uh, we introduced this uh, parameter tc, which is the value of uh, y in terms of x when this cancels. And uh, so since we had f0 of x just in terms of y, I can replace the value of f0 at its radius of convergence is, is the value of this at tc. And uh, if I replace it here, uh, this equation is equivalent to this one. So that's why uh, uh, we have the, the parking process is subcritical if and only if we have this equation. Okay, so this is uh, for the generic situation when the parameter TC exists. Uh, when it does not exist, it means that uh, uh, the, uh, the radius of convergence of, of x was smaller than 
uh, a parameter, uh, the, the derivative does not cancel, so it suffice to look at uh, the second equation at this particular value, and uh, we can really uh, characterize this, this subcritical regime. Uh, maybe in the last uh, 10 minutes, um, I wanted to say more about the critical regime and the critical uh, components. Uh, I will change a little bit the model because the, uh, and come back to random trees and uh, explain you uh, how, uh, um, how the, the critical components look like in, for this model, but uh, we, act, we believe that uh, the component uh, should really have the same geometry and it does not depend on the underlying tree. So I come back to finite trees and uh, more precisely to Cayley trees, which are uh, um, just label trees, not plain. So this, uh, this tree is the same as uh, if I, uh, the 13 was there <coughs> instead of there. So this is not rooted, but I choose the root uniformly at random. So, and this is my uh, parking lot. And then uh, we put M cars on it, um, uh, uniformly at random on the vertices. M is, will be proportional to uh, N. So in the sub and uh, so the the critical uh, parameter is uh, here uh, n over two. If I put less than, if for example, if I put uh, 0 0.4 times n cars, you are in the subcritical regime. Only little uh, local conflict and little uh, part components. At the critical point, you start to have a bigger component, but still a sublinear a number of outgoing cars, and uh, in the supercritical regime, uh, really big uh, components which occupy the positive proportion of the trees, maybe three spots near the leaves, but uh, uh, um, a linear flux of outgoing cars. And if we look really at the critical point, this one, and if I decompose my trees here on the left into uh, the cluster of part cars, it looked at, like this. These are the cluster of part cars in this tree. So they look really uh, more uh, elongated than the initial tree. And um, we can also look at uh, a component conditioned to have uh, to be uh, so a, a part configuration condition to uh, have so a tree as has n, when n vertices arriving on it, condition to have no outgoing cars. <coughs> and this looks like that, really uh, more elongated. This is the fully part tree uh, of size, uh, I don't remember, 500, I think. And uh, this, is tr this is true that uh, they are really more elongated than uh, uh, Galton -Watson, big Galton-Watson tree, for example. Uh, we proved with uh, Nicola that the height of those three are of the order n to the three-quarter, whereas it's square root of n for a uh, uh, Galton-Watson tree, for example. And if we look at the um, um, flux of uh, the total a flux of car, which means I, uh, which is the, the sum of the flux uh, on every edges. This is of order n to the uh, five quarters. Uh, but uh, we only obtained uh, the the height of the tree. So uh, uh, what remains to do is to prove. Uh, exactly what the geometry of the, the, these three are, and uh, also to come back to our model with the, the, bina uh, the binary tree to prove that the components are uh, the same in this case, and uh, also to locate the phase transition for supercritical uh, Galton-Watson tree, not only the binary tree, and uh, study also uh, uh, 
uh, a tree with have stable low or uh, stable uh, car arrivals have uh, more than one parking spot per vertex. And uh, I think I will stop here. Thanks a lot. Are there any questions for Alice? Maybe you said this already, but in the critical case, is there a distribution for the number <coughs> of connected compo number of components? Is it Poisson or? Uh, what um, what do you mean by number? So uh, in the critical case, you drew a bunch. There was a bunch of connect a bunch of components, right? You were you were showing this picture, um, the any n over two. Uh, Ah, uh, you mean this? Yes. So how okay. many how many components are there, and is it, is it, is it converging to some? Does, is there some interesting distribution of the number of components? Um, so the the number. Um, mm, how can I say it? Um, at least the size of the component, maybe first. The size of the component in the critical case, so they are sublinear, uh, more than logarithmic, and the, the right order of the size of the component is n to the two-third. No, I, I forgot to say this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, and there are really small components near the, 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 the leaves, uh, but there are a finite number of components of size n to the two-third. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? I have a question. What does the thickness or redness of the lines mean? Uh, the flux of uh, cars going uh, uh, that drive through this edge. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? In the first model you talked about, I think the line. So you yes. said in the subcritical case, the clusters are of maximum size log n. They are linear, the C max. Yes. They are linear in the supercritical case, and yes. you do not know yet for the critical case, but uh, you have an idea. Okay. We only know it for. Um, Kaley trees, this is n to the two-third, uh, but uh, we believe that it's universal and so we obtain this uh, n to the two-third by uh, uh, linking the parking model with the Erdos-Reni uh, uh, model and uh, so you have a giant component in the, and the phase transition for the apparition of the giant component and uh, we believe that we can obtain a similar result by uh, linking the parking model uh, on uh, critical Galton Watson tree with the configuration model. Thank you. Uh, do you have a combinatorial interpretation for your series Y? Uh, your, your parametrization yeah, yeah, of the yeah, yeah. Um, tree. Not really. This comes from really from the uh, Bousquet, Melou, and Joanne method, uh, kernel method, and I have no interpretation. Maybe, maybe you have. No. Are there any other questions? So I'm wondering whether in the uh, infinite binary case is there a, a law for a car arrivals such that this uh, TUT equation is actually enumerating some maps? Uh, good question. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, Maybe Poisson. Um, since, um, hmm. 
No, don't remember. I can check. <laughs> More questions? Okay, if there are no more questions, then I'd like to thank Alice again. <laughs>